what's poppin? Today I'm going to show you guys how you can use the new pop-up dialog device in a voting system. This explains a lot of things, explains you the device and explains you how to create an easy to do voting system. And with that being said, let's jump right into it. All right, so to give you guys a quick rundown, we're creating a voting system, picks out the majority of players and then votes for whatever the majority of players voted for. In our case, we have five players on the map right now and um, we're gonna vote with a this pop-up system here. So we can vote either yes or no for whatever we're voting, that doesn't really matter right now. And you can see if we vote yes, we get one to yes. If we vote no, we get one to no. And the majority of five players would obviously be three. You can see now that our button over there, which is the end result, is going to turn green as soon as we hit the majority and we have completed our voting system. We have a little bit more advanced version at the end of this video, so if you want to have it fully automized so it actually can recognize how many players on the map, stay tuned at the end, but let's start out first with the first thing you have to do. As most of you guys probably expected, we're gonna start out with the pop-up dialogue device. You can find this device, if you go under your devices category and then you just look, um, it should be in the first row for now, but it could obviously change over time. This device is super versatile. All it basically does is give you a pop-up window, as you saw at the beginning of the video, where you can have at least two answers. You can also have just one answer, um, but for now we're gonna have two answers since we're obviously creating a voting system. And these are the things that we need to create this voting system. We need a title which obviously says, vote now, or you can put whatever you want in here. You can also have a description as well. And um, for my case, we don't need that right now. We have button one text, which is yes, button two text, which is no. And then we have a channel which shows the device. That is completely on you, by the way. So we have a lot of options to show uh, the pop-up window of the device. If you, for example, use the show when receiving from option, that only shows a single person that presses a button. You can also have it to show all players if you press a button or via a channel. And you can even have it auto started from, for example, the game um, or the pre-game lobby which is super useful. But in our case, we're gonna use a button to show this, which we have linked to channel 12, which is this button over here. So if I press this button, I can see this pop-up dialog. And we obviously also need two channels for our button. So for button one, which is yes, we're gonna send on channel 10. And if we press no, we're gonna send on channel 11. You can now see if we press our little button here, the uh, device pops up and we can press something, but it obviously doesn't do anything. To make this device actually do something, we are gonna add trigger devices. The trigger device is one of the most versatile devices in the game and is basically used in any good Fortnite creative map. And you can find this device as always in the devices category. This device down here has so many options, but we only need a few of them. You can see we actually only need three. We need to transmit every X times triggers. We need trigger when receiving from. So what this trigger device will allow us to do is we're gonna send out a signal when we press the trigger three times. We don't get a signal if we press it once, we don't get a signal if we press it twice, but we get a signal if we press it three times. And as I already said at the beginning, we now have a map with five players, so three players is the majority. That means that if we press it three times, we send a signal and then we can uh, have our voting system. So what this means for you if you want to customize this is that you basically have to put the majority number of your players in a voting system in here. That means if you have six players on your map, this would be four. If you would have seven players, it would still be four. If you have eight players, it would be five. We can also automate the system, but I'm gonna show you that at the end to keep it simple for now. The other two channels on here basically allow us to send a signal to the device and then away from the device. So this first channel over here is basically pressing our button. So we can see here that if we press this button over here, we're gonna send a signal to this channel. And then obviously channel when triggered from is going to send a different channel to whatever we want to do at the end, which I'm gonna show you next. So in our case, these two devices will send channels if we press the answer yes and the answer no. Uh, so we can actually send out two signals if, for example, yes or no gets voted. Another last thing that we have to do is basically create something custom where these channels from these two trigger devices can end up. Uh, for example, in this case, we have a switch. So if we press yes, then this switch turns green. And if we press no, then this one turns red. I know this is boring, but here are a few examples which you can also use. So for example, you could ask your players in your map, do you want to have mythic guns in your map? And for example, the players vote for yes, then you could use an item grinder to grant players the mythic gun while using the command of the grant item and receiving phone and then putting the correct channel in here. Or for example, you could give people a completely new class, which maybe even has custom settings for faster running, jumping, whatever you want to do in here with these classes. There's a lot of things that you can do with classes. And all you need for that is a class selector and a class designer. Or if we actually want to go to a new device here, we can have, 
for example, in an easier map. So if you want to have the map easier, so you can have, do you want to have the map easy mode or hard mode? And if you put in easy mode, then you can actually uh, remove a few props or add a few props uh, with this new device, which is called the Prop Manipulator. So for the last one, this is not necessary, but if you want to do it and if you want to have an automated system which detects how many players are in your map and how many people are eligible to vote, you can create a system like this. First of all, you need a player spawn or basically you need any kind of uh, device which can recognize players in your map. You could, for example, also use the new device, which is the player counter. Um, it is a little bit more complicated to use than the player spawn, but it's definitely more versatile and a lot more efficient. You could also use the old system, how people used to do it, and that is the Mutator Zone. In the Mutator Zone, there are two options which are very helpful for that kind of stuff, on player exiting and on player entering. And if you're really crazy, you can also use a player checkpoint. I would not advise you to do that because it kind of is a little bit tricky to do that, but you could still use it if you really want to. But in our case, we take the example that we have a minimum of five players on the map and we want to go up to eight players. I'll just another example, you can expand this and lower this to any amount that you really want. So the most important thing is that we have a channel that recognizes a player. We can have when players spawn to transmit on a channel. This channel is now gonna activate um, a few other trigger devices. These two trigger devices are the exact same as we see before. But now we're gonna add a device which lets us see how many players are on the map and then activates the according trigger devices to that player. So for example, we have this device over here which now detects if we have more than five players and that is obviously six uh, players on the map. All we have to do here in this device, you can see that we send a signal when we have six. Um, and we also trigger the device when five. That means every time someone spawns on a spawn pad, um, it's gonna trigger this device, and then when it reaches six, it activates a few channels. Um, for example, it's gonna activate the channel six, which first of all disables this channel, so it cannot be triggered anymore, and then it disables our old devices, which were only for five players, so you can see right here, channel six deactivates them, and then activates these new ones over here. And these will basically do the same thing as we did before. Um, we now have to obviously adjust our numbers here. So now we have six players. That means four is the majority uh, of players that can vote. Uh, and then we can do the same thing for the yes and no answers as with the other devices. The one thing which is important though is now that we have to also make a channel that disables them. And we're gonna use channel seven in that case. And then we're gonna keep continuing. Now we move on to the next one, which is transmit every X triggers and then on eight. So some of you probably wondered why we skipped the number seven. It's pretty easy because for the number seven. So if you have seven players on the map, it is still the number four that is the majority of players. So you basically uh, save yourself a few channels by just skipping every two things. And that is a very easy trick you can do and save a lot of channels. So we're gonna just continue on with the number eight now. And now we have to do the exact same thing. On eight times it get triggered, so we're gonna send a signal on channel seven. Channel seven then activates these and uh, deactivates uh, these two, as you already saw earlier. And um, yeah, this is basically continuable until the end, however many players you want to have on your map. It obviously takes longer and uh, you have to put out a lot of triggers, but it is one of the easiest things you can do. It is a very simple system um, when you want to use the public device for voting system. There's a lot of other, if you want to have like, if you want to have more voting systems, like easier ones, uh, harder ones, then I can definitely do a few of these tutorials as well. Um, but this is one of the more efficient ones and definitely one of the safest ones because there's not a lot of things you can actually break. And that is it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Hopefully you learned something. Have fun creating your own voting system. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at RichieTunes and I will see you guys back in the next video. Bye.